In this lecture, I just want to get everyone on board with writing functions, because functions play a critical role in any R programming, um, and you tend to write a lot of them when you're writing, uh, doing a lot of data analysis or doing a lot of kind of statistical analysis. And so I just want to make sure that everyone can kind of get started writing functions, and, uh, and particularly for those who are less familiar with programming languages in general. Uh, so this is just going to be about writing your first function. It's kind of like the hello world, so to speak, uh, of R. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to write you know write a, you're going to want to write the function in a text file right so it's possible to write functions uh, on the command line in R uh, but it's usually not uh, preferable and so usually you're going to want to put your functions uh, in a separate file separate from any interactive stuff that you're doing in the command line in the future uh, you'll want to put your functions in an R package which is a kind of a more structured type of uh, uh, kind of kind of uh, environment uh, with documentation and everything but we won't talk about that now. Right now the first thing you're going to want to do is put your functions in a text file. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is open up RStudio. So let's do that. Um, and so you can see here in RStudio there's some uh, there's some stuff going on here from a previous uh, project that I'm working on. So you that may happen to you uh, and generally you can either close it or you can just ignore it. Um, I want to create a, a new R script here. So let's create a, a clean script here uh, to kind of put our code into. So the first function I'm going to write is really simple. It's just going to take two numbers and add them together. Uh, so this, uh, this function obviously doesn't have a real point to it, but uh, it shows you how to use the function syntax, how to specify the arguments, and how to return a value. So the function that adds two values, I'm just going to call it add two. Um, and, um, and so you give it, use the function directive to start it off. Now it's going to take, it's going to add two values, so it has to take two arguments. So I'm just going to take call the two arguments x and y, and then I'm going to uh, take the two arguments and add them together with the plus operator, right? X plus y, and then I close off the function with the curly brace. So you can see that I didn't have to do anything special to return um, the value that um, that's the sum of the two elements because the remember in any R function the fun the function returns whatever the last expression was. So here. There's only really one expression, so therefore it's the last expression, um, and and it equals the sum of x and y. So here I can I can highlight this guy, uh, and uh, run it in the console, and you can see I, now I've got my function here. I can say add two, and let's give it say three and five, and hopefully I get I get eight. Yes, that's a good sign. So it adds the two numbers together, um, and that's that. So it's a very simple function, um, and um, and you've now written your first function in R. So the next function uh, that I want to talk about is a little, it's only slightly more complicated. It's going to take a vector of numbers, um, and it's going to it's going to return the subset of the vector that's that's um, above the value of ten. So any number in this vector that's bigger than ten, it's going to return those numbers for you. Okay. Um, so let's bring back our original function. We'll call this one um, above ten, just because it gives you any number that's above ten. Um, and it's going to take a vector here. We'll call it x. Uh, you don't have to call it x. Uh, I'm just calling that. And I like to open and close the curly, bra curly braces right away, just so you know where the beginning and the end of the function is um, uh, if you happen to have a lot of code in, you know, in, a, in a single file. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to construct a logical statement that figures out which elements of this vector x are, are greater than 10. All right, so I'm going to assign an object. I'll call it use because these are, these are the numbers that I'm going to use, and I'll say x greater than 10. Right, so this will return a logical vector um, of trues and falses to indicating which element of x is greater than 10. And then I'm going to subset the vector x with this logical vector. So now this function returns uh, the subset of the vector x that is bigger than 10. Uh, of course, if there are no elements in the x that are bigger than 10, then it will return an empty numeric vector. Now, of course, there's really nothing special about the number 10. I just kind of made that up. And so you may want to create a function that allows people to sub to kind of extract the elements of a vector that are above an arbitrary other number, right? And so, so it could be 10, it could be 12, it could be 5, it could be anything. So maybe you'll want to allow the user to specify that number. So I'll just call, I'll create a new function here, um, call above. So it doesn't have the 10 encoded in it. I'll use the function directed. And I'll have a second argument called n, which could be any number, really. So let's start it off. We'll get the curly braces in there. And now I'll create a logical statement that's x is greater than n, right? And then I'll subset the vector x based on that logical statement. So now if I can source this into R, oops, um, and I can uh, run my function here. So I'll just create a, a vector 
let's say x is uh, 1 through 20. And I'll say above x. Uh, oh, I can see, so I didn't specify the number n, so it's not going to know what to cut it off at, so I need to specify the threshold. So let's do uh, 12. And you can see it returned all the numbers that were greater than 12. So that's uh, kind of as we expected, so the function appears to be working well. Now, let's suppose that maybe there is something special about the number 10, uh, and maybe it's something that um, people are going to be kind of doing very often. It's a very common number. So uh, you might want to specify a default argument. So you might want the default to be 10. So remember, when, you, when I ran the function before and I didn't specify the number n, uh, it gave me an error. And maybe you don't want people to have to encounter that error. And so you'll specify a default value, n equals 10. So if people don't specify the cutoff value n, it will just automatically default to 10. So now I can, I can run this in R. Uh, and now if I do above just x, you see I don't get the error anymore. It automatically gives you all the numbers that are bigger than 10. So it's kind of nice in R when you're writing functions to be able to specify default values like this that make the life of the user just a little bit easier, especially for very common cases where it's not important uh, that the user specify an argument. So those are some very simple functions um, in R that can be used to kind of process data or make do simple calculations like adding two numbers. Uh, the next function I want to talk about is, uh, is going to just take a matrix or a data frame and calculate the mean of each column. All right, so this is slightly more complicated. You, you have to take your argument and then you have to loop through each column to calculate the mean of each one. All right, so this is going to involve using a for loop um, and, and so we'll talk about it here. So let's call this function uh, column mean because that's what it does. And I'll use the function directive here. Now it's going to take an argument. Uh, I like to call my arguments x. You don't have to. So why don't we just call it uh, y for fun. Um, and so y is going to be a data frame or a matrix. And we're going to go through the columns of this data frame or matrix and calculate the mean of each column. So the first thing I need to figure out is how many columns does this thing have. And that can be easily done. I'll call it nc for number of columns. And we can use the ncall function for that. Uh, that will calculate the number of columns. And, and then I need to initialize a vector that's going to that's going to store the means for each column. And the length of this vector has to equal the number of columns. right? So I'll just call it means, and it'll be a numeric vector uh, equal to the length of the number equal to the number of columns. So this is just an empty vector. It doesn't it's going to have it's going to be initialized to, to be all zeros, but we're going to fill it as we go through the column. So now we want to for loop through the columns, and I'll say i is in, uh, and then I'll say one through and see, so this creates a, uh, a integer vector that starts at one and ends at the number of columns. And then I'm gonna for loop through, and for each um, i, I'm just gonna assign to my means vector the mean of x bracket i, right? Oh, sorry, it's called y here now. Um, and that's it. And then, so for, now, now I haven't returned anything yet, so right now this function doesn't do anything particularly useful, but what I wanna do is return the vector of means um, and so I'm just going to return that. And that, since that's the last expression in the function, uh, that's what will get returned. So I can uh, source this into R. And I'll just find some uh, arbitrary uh, data set. Well, we can use the air quality data set, I guess. I'll just take the column means of that and see how it works. Okay, so I, there are six, I think there are six columns in this data set, so it gave me six means. Now you see that the first two columns have NAs, uh, and that's because uh, if, the, if the vector has an NA in it, then you can't calculate the mean. And so the one thing you might want to do is, is by default, is just kind of throw out all the missing values and just calculate the mean amongst the observed values. And so you'll notice that a lot of functions have a feature where it's like, uh, where they, you, can, you can choose whether you want to remove the NAs or not. So let me just add an argument here, it's called remove NA, and it'll default to true. Right, and then I'll pass this argument to the mean function. So the mean uh, has an na.rm argument, and I'll pass it this value. Uh, and so now um, I can default to removing the na's when I um, calculate my column mean. So I'll source this into R, uh, and we can run on the console column mean. And so now the default will be, now I get my means for those columns because the default was to remove the NAs. I could say uh, false here, and then my NAs will come back. So I can always choose to kind of go back to the old behavior if I wanted to. Um, so the last thing you want to do anytime you're writing a function, the most important thing, of course, is to save your file. So right now this file is unsaved. If you don't save it and RStudio crashes or something happens, uh, you'll lose all your work. Uh, and so you want to go to the save uh, uh, save as menu, 
uh, and just save your file as you know functions or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can give it the .r extension, uh, and now your code is saved to a file. So that should get you started just writing some simple functions in R. Uh, for your programming assignments, you'll have to write a, a few functions that kind of go through and look at data. Uh, but I just wanted to get you started writing your first function so that you know kind of how the directive, the function directive works, how the arguments work, and you can play around a little bit with, uh, with more complicated ideas as you work through the assignments.